In the previous video of the series, we discussed this idea of using local estimated information, so using a linear regression of the last points, and the idea of using polynomial regression. If you want to learn more about polynomial regression, stop the video and visit this one. So as you remember, in that video, we did some predictions. So we used different models, a linear model, quadratic model, and a cubic model. And actually, by the way, we can use a function, this function polynomial, which is simpler and has more subtleties inside. But let's stick to the point. So the idea was that linear regression wasn't that good, but between quadratic regression and cubic regression, we couldn't see any improvement. And the idea was trying to use different metrics like adjusting R square or using cross validation to see which one is going to generalize better. So take a look at this data. Clearly this is not linear. So we can try different polynomial regressions. So this is a quadratic line, a cubic line, and a quartic line, so four degree polynomial. So you can see that th all of them are performing pretty well. So there are some slight differences here at the end, but they would say that the three of them are good. But what's the problem with polynomial regression? The problem is that when we try to generalize outside the scope of the data, things start to become uh, weird. So you can see here that the blue is not reliable for extrapolation. Why is that? Because trying to fit a, a fourth order polynomial means that you have a still several coefficients that are going to be infinite at the end. So a, a fourth degree polynomial is going to be escape into infinity really quickly. So in this case, I would say that the red or the green are good enough. Maybe the green because it's, it's capturing better this kind of bending here. But then we face another problem. So imagine that now we have these curly mm, scattered points. So we have ups and, ups and downs, and we are trying to use this cubic again. So clearly here we demand another uh, polynomial. So cubic is not enough, quartic is not enough. Maybe we need a tenth of the polynomial. But again, we face this problem that what is going to happen when we try to extrapolate. Low order polynomials are good because they are simple, but sometimes they are not able to capture the complexity of the data. High order polynomials are, have, have, can capture this variability by sucks at extrapolating. So how can we deal with that? So here is where this idea of piecewise polynomial centers into play. So imagine that we are trying to use three theoretic polynomials, which are not very complicated, but the problem is that we try to do this by pieces. So we define a point here, and we try to use one polynomial in this side and another polynomial to the other side. This looks better because we are not facing this idea of getting outside this region, but the problem is that we have some discontinuity here. So how can we deal with that? So we, when we have linear regression, this is very, really simple because the only thing that we have to do is matching the intercept so we have this point in common. We can try to do the same with cubic polynomials. So we define this function, so we have a couple of polynomials and this common point is called the knot. And basically we are trying to fix some of these parameters in order to have continuity here. But we have another problem here. You can see that continuity is not enough. So we don't like these sort of steps, these sort of jumps here. So this doesn't guarantee that we're going to have a smooth function. And this is when we have to impose several constraints. And in the case of cubic polynomials, with, if we match also the first and second derivative, we can have something more smoother. So instead of having discontinuity in the variable or discontinuity in the first derivative, we also have continuity above. And you can see this is a smoother function there. This is called a cubic spline. And the idea of splines is using different knots, different cutting points, in order to keep this continuity uh, safe. There are several ways to do that. One of the most popular ones are called the B-splines. And basically you're using, for instance, cubic polynomials, and you have zeros be beyond some threshold. But the idea is you have some overlapping. So you have different knots given by these dust vertical lines. And for each knot, we are defining this function, which is a third order polynomial, and we are cutting there. So basically, this orange line is cutting here. This another line is another function. So basically, we have overlapping, but also we are saying that the function has not influenced long, uh, far enough from the data point. So in summary, the idea is using polynomials of low order, like cubic order, but try to avoid these uh, things of generalization. So flexibility is not in the, in the degree of the polynomial. The flexibility comes in the number of knots. So if we have a lot of knots, we can use different polynomials interpolating different parts of the graph. Uh, still, we, we can have some problems at the end. So these are cubic polynomials, so we can uh, still have these sort of things at the end. So it's a natural way to, s to, s to solve this problem, and it's called the natural spline. And it's using cubic polynomials in the inner knots, but in the knots at the, at the ends, we have linear functions, so straight lines. And you can see here uh, an example. So this is a cubic polynomial, but now in this case, I'm using a linear polynomial. So this is a, g a very good idea in order to avoid these shootings at the ends.
you can run an experiment using natural splines or B splines. And in, in this case, I'm going to use just five nodes. So I'm using a sign function with some noise. Uh, let's do some predictions. So this is for the natural spline. And you can see these straight lines in this part. And you can see this is capturing pretty well, even with just five points. It, it, take into account that I'm using just five interpolation points, and this is really good. And again, with the B splines, we have a also good example. But if you take a look at the ends, you can see some differences. So it looks like this interval of confidence is more dangerous for the B spline than for the natural spline. And this is related to the curvature here. So here you have this straight line, and in the blue case, you have this cubic polynomial. Here you have a more dramatic example, and, and you can see that when the data is scarce, so you have a little data points at the ends, the differences are, are higher, and I wouldn't trust so much this B spline, so the natural spline is generally say much better than the other. So a new question is how to choose the number of and location of the nodes. So we have a lot of information, the flexibility comes actually from the nodes. So we have several choices, the, the, the obvious one, which is uh, using uniformly distributed uh, nodes, like I, I know every every ten points we we locate a node, and the other idea would be to use more nodes where we have more data, and this is the the default choice. And first, calculate the quantiles of the data, and when 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 you have more information at some point of the graph, you're going to use more nodes. And the other thing is when you have more variability, so you have a larger, let's say, variance in some parts of the graph, you're going to use more nodes. As I was saying, this is the default choice. And as usual, we have cross-validation combined with these techniques in order to improve the, the, the idea. So in Caret, the, the syntax is very simple. So we are going to use train, the method is going to be gam spline, and we're going to use a grid, changing the degrees of freedom. Remember, degrees of freedom is not related to the degree of the polynomial. In this case, we are going to use, in all cases, the default value, which is cubic spline. And we are going to use from two nodes to 25 nodes. And you can see that the optimal one for this experiment is six nodes. And this means that above six nodes, the things are not going better. And the reason is because we are going to have these fluctuations in, in, in the, at the end of the polynomial. So we are increasing the ability of the model to generalize. Another technique that you can apply is what is called a smoothing a spline. So instead of increasing the number of splines, you can add a penalty. And in this case, the penalty is the second derivative of the function. And as you remember from basic calculus, the second derivative is related to the curvature. So a flat line has zero curvature, and something which is very wiggly has a high curvature. So in this case, we are trying to penalize, and this parameter is a, a, a kind of tuning parameter that allows us to, to tune that. So this remembers regularization, and actually it's a form of regularization. So let me show you an example. So in this case, we are increasing the lambda. Lambda is the penalty. So when lambda is huge, you have a straight line. And when lambda is small, you can reduce the, the fluctuations in the number of, of maxima and minima of the series. So let's go back again. Huge penalty, a straight line. Low penalty, this something which is so weakly. So again, cross-validation can allow us to use a good compromise between low and high. Again, you can see that the order is increasing when lambda is too high, and also the, the order is, is high when lambda is too small. So again, we can try to find an optimal value. And see you in next video.